What's going on you guys? The sun is shining, the guns are showing, and the beer will certainly be flowing. And plus I'm wearing one of my favorite shirts today. <laughs> but all in all, it is another beautiful day in Indy. I'm Cloudless, and I'm in Indy, and fortunately for you, it is another beverage review. Let's, uh, let's get into it. <clears throat> All right, you guys, so I have another beer review for you guys today, and um, what I'm reviewing is the Speed Castle by Three Floyds Brewing. Now, I have had this beer before, <laughs> but it was it was quite some time ago, I want to say maybe sometime last year, uh, and I did not have, I, I didn't have good first impressions, honestly, but if there is a beer that I don't particularly care for, I like to wait a little bit of time and, um, you know, come back to it, try it again, and, uh, and see if maybe my taste buds have changed, maybe it was just an off day, but, uh... But here we are. Also, we'll be doing this review in my Teku glass. Finally decided to bring it back out instead of my usual wine in glass. I mean, you'll, you'll see plenty of that. You have seen plenty of that. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's, let's uh, get on to this beer. Okay, so we have the Speed Castle. Now, before... Well, let me tell you how I even came upon this beer. So, I went to Three Floyds, I want to say sometime last year, I think in February, and uh, you know, their tap room was closed and whatnot, but they were still selling to go beers. And I saw this, uh, this logo. This logo design looked really cool. It was like a combination between Speedway, the gas station, not the racetrack, but the gas station and um, White Castle. Thus, Speed Castle. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, wow, you know, that, that sounds really interesting. Um, and I think, you know what, I'll pick up a six-pack of that. <clears throat> so I did. And um, on a hot, sunny day after doing some yard work, I decided to give the beer a try. And I, 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 wasn't, feeling too, I wasn't feeling too good about it, honestly. But as I said before, you know, I'm giving this beer another chance. I'm giving this beer a proper review today. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into the can design here. So, as you know, well, I, I, would, I wanted to say Three Floyds is, is famous, um, or one of the things that they're famous for is their unique uh, can design. I want to say almost comic book um, can design. And so yeah, I mean, every can has these, these pretty cool designs on them. I'm not sure exactly what that is, uh, but... Um, but yeah, it almost maybe a little bit reminds me of like smoke or something like that from Mortal Kombat. <laughs> you know, or one of those, um, or, or it was it Enoch, um, one of those characters. <clears throat> yeah. So um, yeah, this is the Speed Castle World Ending Pilsner coming in at an ABV of 5.6%. And um, brewed by Three Floyds Brewing LLC in Munster, Indiana, which is right next to Hammond. If you guys haven't, um, you know, gone and check, checked out the brewery, I highly recommend it. They also have a distillery as well. Um, they do distill spirits. I actually have one of their um, spirit spirits um, in my dry bar, and maybe I'll do a video, you know, reviewing that, you know, in the future. But, but yeah. And similar to my Jinx Proof video, we have the It's not normal so is that their is that their tagline maybe also of course one of these days i'll do a review just of their website i think that's i think i spoke about that in a previous video where i'm just going to you know review brewery websites <laughs> you know? yeah but um yeah that's pretty much it on this can this is a uh 12 um fluid ounce can and real quick, I think there's some more information on Untap, so I'm gonna cut to that and uh, show you guys that. What's going on, you guys? Welcome to the studio. Let's go to the monitor and uh, check out the Three Floyds website. 
Now, here we are. I've honestly already done some of the hard work. Let me adjust my mic here. Uh, and I've already looked at the site. Also, this site is really cool. It's, um, as you can see here, let me um, refresh the, the site here. Look at this. <clears throat> Look at this. Every time you come to the site, the background changes. And and I, I believe it moves as well. Hold on. Let me go to the other one. Look at that. I think that's really cool. That's really cool. But enough about that. Let's uh, go ahead and go to the beers. And so what I meant by... When I met earlier when I said I already did some of the, the hard work, um, I already checked the site and unfortunately I couldn't find the speed castle through me regular means. So of course I googled it um, and I found it here, which is weird because if you, for instance, select, we'll just go to one of the top ears here, zombie dust for example, you know, that's, that's what pops up here. Um, do we can go here, can go here. Um, but yeah, it doesn't, the selection does not show up. Um, but of course, if you remember the URL, then you'll be able to find it. The, the beer is still currently online. So let's check this out. Um, 5.6% ABV, 23 IBUs. Annihilation is imminent as our newest year-round offering has arrived, using hops sourced from German farms and hand-selected fresh or wet hops, Speed Castle is a crisp, refreshing, and ultimately world-ending Pilsner. Find some near 46321. Um, okay, I, I don't know exactly what uh, zip code that is, but it says it's available year-round. It debuted roughly two years ago, but obviously it's no longer on their uh, their website. But really, really cool site, if you, if you ask me. Um, let's go ahead to Untapped. I already have it pulled up here. Here we go. So same information, 5.6, 23 IBUs. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, let's go ahead to beeradvocate.com. Is classified as a German Pilsner, and uh, and yeah. Oh, look at that! A Pilsner named after our favorite White Castle in Speedway, located a mere two blocks from the brewery. I was literally just talking about that design, and you know, which is the whole reason why I bought the beer, and was kind of surprised that it's not on the can. But I digress. This crisp, refreshing lager was brewed with a single hop variety, Splatter Select, a relatively new hop, 1993 bred, at the Hull Institute in Germany. The particular hops we used are unique due to the fact they are still wet or fresh. They have not been dried and pelletized. Interesting. Yet, they were picked fresh and processed in a way that fresh hop that the fresh hop character is preserved. So are they are they basically saying that they literally took a whole fresh hop and threw it into the mash? Like <laughs> that that's 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 absolutely amazing actually and, and pretty cool um if you ask me. But uh real quick let's I, I I'm kinda curious as far as uh what splatter uh, select is so we're gonna go ahead and open up hoplist.com and let's see what let's see what it gives us all right so we are here obviously yes I do use DuckDuckGo even if I say um, I googled okay um, I already looked at the hoplist I did not like that option uh, so we're just gonna move on to the beermaverick.com and let's see if it gives us any more information. Okay, that's cool. Tags are spicy and grassy. Very, very interesting. For all you brewing, beer brewing nerds out there, here's some information if you want to pause the video or just go to any of the links here. So here are some styles that it's commonly uh, used in. <clears throat> Uh, and let's see here. We're going to move on to beerandbrewing.com. I think this is where I was reading. So 
the Hop Research Institute in Hull, or Hull, in the Hallertau uh, in Bavaria. See Hallertau Hop region. I remember that the Oktoberfest um, by Sun King Brewery actually used hops as well um, from the Hallertau region as well, or Hallertau hops as well. So that's, that's actually pretty cool in general. But uh, yeah, this variety has a rather complicated genetic makeup. I realize I don't have the screen on. There we go. Has a rather complicated genetic makeup, but is largely derived from Hallertau, Mittelfrua, and Spalt. Spalt, I'm sorry. Um, see Hallertau, Mittelfrua, Hop, and Spalt Hop. The Spalt region of Germany grows a bit more select than it does the eponymous. Eponymous? Eponymous? <laughs> well, yeah, I'm, I'm honestly not going to read all that for you guys. You guys can on your own time or maybe on a different video. I'll, I'll cover that. But that's just to kind of give you an idea of, um, you know, that that beer there. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this. Oh, hold on. One more thing I want to show you guys here on YakimaValleyHops.com. I think I use that site a lot when I'm talking about hops in my videos. Um, but here are some more stuff. Key flavors. It's going to be spicy, slightly floral. And, um, and yeah. All right. Anyways, <clears throat> back to the video. Okay, welcome back, you guys. So I think, and this is me just remembering, uh, <laughs> that shot was cut in post, or, or, you know, made in post. But I think... I was remembering they used um, German hops in the spear as well as American um, American malts, uh, and they use you know fresh wet hops. So I'm assuming that at least from the hop, I I'm assuming that this is what maybe going to be very hop forward, maybe pungent, a little bit of bitterness there. That's I guess that's kind of what I'm expecting. Um, Especially, you know, when they actually talk about the hops in the Pilsner, instead of just talking about the malt specifically. Um, but, but yeah, let's uh, let's just go ahead and get into this. I think I'm talking too much here. There's not really much to say. Uh oh, there we go. Okay, let's um. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that head, you guys. That you guys absolutely, you guys know that I love a good head <laughs> on my beer. <laughs> Just, just look at that beautifulness. Just nice golden white head there. I did just take this out of the fridge, um, so it's not very transparent. And because I'm not using my winding glass, I can't, you know, see the uh, the logo on the other side there, which is how I've been gauging, um, you know, the transparency. But can I see the? Uh, can I see the, the phone at least? No. No, not very transparent at all. All the bugs are out right now. It is, it's pretty warm out here, but it's still it's still cool. But still warm enough that the the bugs are getting um very confident. <laughs> but look at that frothiness, you guys. That is so creamy. I'm not even sure if I can get that on the camera. That's actually why I used to take a glass because just a, the shape of the glass you can kind of see the head a little bit as opposed to my wine glass too much of a curb or not enough of a curb rather and it'll spill if i try to do what i just did there but look at that you guys absolutely beautiful mm. very floral aroma as well once again we're getting a little bit of a um a citrus there too. So we have a floral and citrus in there. Mm, yeah, that's good. That's good. I'm smelling it, by the way. I haven't tried it yet. <laughs> mm. All right, let's let's actually get into this. Mm. Yep, yep, and there it is. So, it's a very light on the palate, I want to say. Um, and the, I guess the bitterness that I'm getting is 
kind of a, I want to say like a sharp grapefruit. So not like sweet grapefruit, but I want to say like a very, I guess a tart kind of grapefruit a little bit there. I mean, I'm smelling some other things as well, but I'm not able to pick it out. Mm. Honestly, that surprisingly isn't that bad. I mean, it kind of meets my expectations of, you know, a Pilsner. At least, kind of, at least what I would call a classic Pilsner. Maybe not necessarily the, the Pilsner or Quell. Uh, you know, from uh, from Pilton, the the original. But as far as like when I think of a pale lager, uh, that's kind of what I that's kind of what I expect. A little bit of maltiness there, and um, you know, a slight bitterness. But at least from this one here, I I feel like I'm not really tasting the malt. It's I feel like a lot of the flavor that I'm getting is from the hops and it almost reminds me a little bit of a um of a pale ale that's that's literally what this reminds me of kind of i, I probably just contradicted myself <laughs> i said oh yeah this totally this totally reminds me of your classic pilsner and then i go ahead and say actually this reminds me more or actually this reminds me of a um a pale ale but hey you know they're, they're Maybe it's somewhere right in the middle, okay? And, and maybe the reason why, you know, the reason a, a, a Pilsner could kind of taste like a pale ale is because of, you know, being hop forward. And what, pale ales are, you know, they're, they're known for, I, I'm not exact. I don't exactly remember the, um, the, the scale of, of bitterness, you know, as far as like assertive and perceived and I, I I think there's aggressive I'm not sure but that's what pale are known for they're are pronounced you know they're known for their pronounced bitterness there and I think of course with a, a pilsner if the bitterness is too pronounced then it could potentially fall into the category of a pale ale I'm not, I'm not sure if that's a thing <laughs> you know in the beer world there there it is common you know for uh, breweries to kind of blend styles you know, or they may create a beer and it totally hits their goal, but then they're like, ah, oh, man, you know, this kind of like this situation, maybe we were shooting for Pilsner, but ended up getting a pale ale, but we're still going to call it a Pilsner. And, um, and, and here's why, or, or the other way around. And, you know, and, and they say, you know, or we're just going to call this a pale ale. Why not? So, I mean, over, all in all, I mean, it's interesting. I, I would definitely say that this time around is a lot better than the first time I had this. And I'm not in, entirely sure why. I think I'm actually going to have some more of that. It's because I I like it so. And just look at that head. Just look how pronounced and defined that head is. You know, just, just absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful there. And I know I say this quite often, but once again, kind of reminds me of OJ. Yes, I really do enjoy OJ. <laughs> but yeah, that's just that's just a beautiful beer, and um, and yeah, that's that's all I can say, you guys. Mm. And I almost feel kind of bad too because I actually met a um, a Three Floyds representative while I was working doing a tasting demo, we were both doing tasting demos, and I expressed that, you know, I didn't really care for the beer all that much, and, you know, to, that was on that was an honest mistake. I definitely wish I could take that back. Maybe this is me taking it back. Will they ever see this video? Probably not. Um, <laughs> but, but still, I mean, it's, it's, it's not a bad beer. Also, I think they discontinued this because I didn't, or maybe it was just a seasonal beer. Uh, because I couldn't find it on their website, but it was all untapped, obviously. But um, I could definitely drink a, uh, I could definitely drink a liter of that. I could probably maybe do a keg of this, maybe. But yeah, I I, I would recommend it. I would definitely recommend it. Stopping at your total wine or your 
um, local liquor store and um, picking up a six pack of this. And um, tell me what you tell me what you think about it, because honestly, it's, it's not that bad. That being said, this has been Cloudless and Indy reviewing the um, Speed Castle by Three Floyd's Brewing Company in Munster, Indiana. And uh, I'll leave you guys off with this. Cheers, salud, slancha, skol, nostrovia, pros, peace out. And I'll see you guys in the next one.